Drug usage has been a problem among teenagers and young adults all over the world. The overdose rate has gone from claiming 518 lives in 2010 to 1,145 deaths in the year 2021. In Chicago, the drug problem is still running rampant. As many teens and young adults are utilizing drugs ranging from e-cigarettes, smoking marijuana, doing party drugs, or abusing opioids. With the upsurge in uses of substances, we are seeing more issues in the field of mental health. More people are developing anxiety, depression, and overall more problems with completing daily tasks they were previously able to complete in their everyday lives. We spoke to Billy Lamar Brooks, a 74-year-old North Lawndale resident, as well as Kimberly B., Steve Pepper, China Fonza, and Steve Salt. You know, back in the 60s, young people were very uh, conscious you know, they were very involved, very engaged in social justice issues, you know, uh, but, but we, we, we weren't caught up in, 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 in the drug, you know, uh, epidemic. That's why they introduced crack cocaine, you know, uh, because what crack does is it eats away at the nerve endings and, and the fatty tissues in your brain. And you're done. You know, you, you stop right there. I was addicted to crack cocaine for 26 years. Uh, and my experience with it, 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 it was my friend. I loved it. It made me lose a lot of things. I lost family. I lost jobs. I lost relationships. I lost uh, family, contact with family. So, yes, yeah, so it has really been inspirational some parts of my life. Yes, I, had a, I experienced substance abuse as a young lady, and I've been clean 20 years, but there's still, like, there's still wreckage as far as physical things go. Like, anyone that engaged in drug activity for a number of years, it deteriorates your body in some shape, form, or fashion. Most people, after they get clean, they have a lot of medical issues, strokes, aneurysms, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, and all those things are dangerous. I've been blessed. I haven't experienced much from that. I do believe in peer pressure. I do believe that people can activate your thinking because it's all going to be up to us, but people can activate your thinking, places can activate your uh, thinking, things can activate your thinking. So sometimes, like, if you're supposed to be going, for me, sometimes I, I be going to the store, and I, I smell barbecue, and that barbecue smell activate my thinking, and now I want some barbecue. You just have, you see how quick that changes, and that's just like with your friends and peer pressure, uh, uh, Y'all go on to the show and, and somebody say, oh, let's fight this joint up first. And then you're like, okay, so your mind is thinking, everybody doing it, so let me do it. So I just want you just be mindful of the choices that you make. Ain't like you got shit to do tomorrow, you don't have to go to work. Don't take a hit. I got a drink. Crazy. Let's stimulate your mind. You ain't got shit to do. Put it in your mouth. Shut up. There are many reasons as to why someone may turn to using substances. People can turn to drugs and alcohol because of family issues, peer pressure, trying to suppress certain emotions slash memories, life issues, etc. My grandpa had alcohol use disorder. But he had stopped drinking before <clears throat> I was born. Um, but it was something that I knew existed and then 
couple of his kids, so my aunts and uncles, um, had problems with drinking. And then I developed a problem with opioids, or with heroin specifically. Um, and once I got into that world, then I had a bunch of other friends who also had issues with opioids. That's kind of part of the community. Our belief is not that the drugs and alcohol are the problem. We believe that that was a solution to the problem that didn't work out so well. So we want to help find solutions for the actual problems. So we have, um, like we have a women's trauma group. We have a intergenerational trauma group, um, how it's passed from our parents on down. Um, we also have, let's see, we have yoga, we have acupuncture, uh, we have a move group, it's an exercise group. Our newest um, addition is um, called Soul Train, and it's based on Soul Train, and, um, and it's uh, music and dance therapy, and it's run by one of the therapists. Um, we also have like a loneliness alleviation, uh, learning to love yourself, um, developing hope, spirituality, um, you know, so we've got a real wide variety of stuff so that, you know, you can make sure that you, in, in fact, well, I know a lot of people will, will come five days a week so they can hit more of the, the groups. As a unit, we should all come together and work on this issue. The drug epidemic has heavily impacted the youth at an early age, leaving many concerned for the age of new adults. We can work together to fix this issue one step at a time whether that's working on creating better help centers, helping the youth to feel more comfortable with expressing their emotions and needs, striving for more educated programs to take place, or providing more resources in our communities. Whatever the case may be, we can solve this issue if we work together. This issue happens all over the world, and it may be happening in your community, and that's why you should care.